This episode of Tech News Day is brought to you by Audible and by Honey. Well, it looks like we're witnessing the last desperate gasps for air from the entertainment industry's attempts at selling mainstream crypto and NFT adoption to a generation of people who clearly want nothing to do with it. And if you thought Matt Damon, Larry David, and other celebrities simply appearing in advertisements for cryptocurrency exchanges was doing a disservice to their legacies, they have nothing on the music industry, where performers and labels have sunk millions of dollars into this uh, adoption of this new tech with little if nothing to show for it. Only the cringeworthy, low quality, and just plain sad parading of projects and characters that they are financially indebted to a visual representation of the sunk cost fallacy that is currently making even the most legendary performers look foolish as they allow their teams to develop soulless integrations designed to shield industry-wide investments from further financial ruin. And it's, it's not just us arguing time and time again that NFTs are long past dead. There is essentially zero naturally occurring adoption of these digital collectibles after the peaks of last year. And we'll get to a damning new report about that in just a second. But let's focus on what is arguably the biggest display of NFT integration that we've seen yet and how it's proof that this is a complete waste of time, energy, money, and can potentially alienate fan bases from uh, artists uh, that they would have otherwise loved or just industries in general. Yeah. Uh, Sunday night was the MTV Video Music Awards, the one night out of the year people turn the channel to uh, MTV and don't find just 24 hours of ridiculousness praying. This is an actual <laughs> Wait a second. live event. Where's, Where's Rob, Rob Dirty? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, this isn't Rob. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they had zero subtlety when it came to pushing the metaverse onto people as if it was some actual thing to be a part of and not just the fantasy of a few powerful tech companies. So yeah, the tone for the night was immediately set by uh, an appearance by none other than Johnny Depp who floated into the event in a spacesuit, exclaiming that he needed the work before introducing certain segments of the show. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, this is odd for many reasons. There's, <laughs> there's layers to this. Uh-huh. Yeah. Look, we're MTV, and we're looking for engagement. Yeah. What's the most... What, let, can we pull up some, some charts about what the most engaged moments of the year were for people online? Hmm. We should get Johnny Depp to float yeah. in as a uh, spaceman. Kids love Johnny Depp. That, that's the other <laughs> thing. That's the other layer to all of this is just like... Kids love uh, just leathery, slur-voiced... Uh, aging actor. Uh, aging actor Johnny Depp. Who's, they love him. Whose main contribution to music is a terrible band. Yeah, a band that is is not good. But he he's friends with a lot of talented people, and he's so charming, he gets them to, you know, make him feel nice and play play music with him. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, I, t I tuned in after seeing some uh, some notes about the VMAs, and it really seemed, and I'll get into it in a minute, uh, but it seemed like an award show created by 50-year-olds for 35-year-olds that they think are teenagers. They're like, yes, this is what the teens like. Yeah. Let's get Flea on stage for 25 minutes. But people still watch this. Like, it's... It's an event. It's a spectacle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, more than, like, the fucking Oscars or whatever. <laughs> but, but but with the uh, Johnny Depp thing, it, it kind of seemed like they were trying to recreate a, a, a moment of VMA's past where, where Pee Wee Herman had a little comeback and he took the stage and said, heard any good jokes lately? After being caught uh, masturbating in a porn theater. And it's like, Pee Wee, you know, technically was doing what you were supposed to do in a porn theater. He yeah. was jerking off. He understood the assignment. We've been through this many times before. It was a sting operation. But Johnny Depp... <laughs> Johnny Depp floated on screen and made a few quips about needing work after a domestic abuse trial. Okay. Uh, actually, it was a defamation trial. Yeah, yeah but revolving around domestic abuse. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it just really seemed like something made in a boardroom after looking at trending charts. Johnny Depp mentions they're really big right now. People are talking about him. They're really engaged. Let's get Johnny Depp to float in. It'll be great for the views and it'll start a good conversation online. Yeah. But then the real metaverse stuff started appearing. Uh, more specifically, a entire category titled Best Metaverse Performance. Okay. So if you don't already feel old, please enjoy the next couple sentences that are going to come out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Here we're the 90s for the 2022 MTV VMA Best Metaverse Performance Award. BTS performing in Minecraft. Ariana Grande for her concert in Fortnite. Justin Bieber performing in Wave. 
21 Pilots, and Charlie XEX for separate performances in Roblox, and Blackpink for their virtual concert inside PUBG Mobile. Which is, that's the one that took home the, the Moon Person Award. They changed it from Moon Man. I didn't know PUBG, first of all, it's, I forget it's even still around, but they're, uh, they got, they're doing the, the Fortnite thing. That's yeah. cool. All right. They're doing a metaverse and Blackpink performed in it. And it, apparently it was so good that they gave him an award. And the award is Moon Person now, not Moon Man, which, okay. Moon Person. Mm -hmm. Despite no women having set foot on the moon. Hey, did we, did we go to the moon recently? Oh, no, that was canceled. Oh. They, cancel culture strikes again. Yeah. One of the engines on you, the Artemis had, like, a leak in it or something at the last second, or it couldn't even, be cooled correctly. He, you know, they, they couldn't go to moon the moon in, uh, now because of the cancel culture. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, yeah, that was, scrub that was scrubbed. And I'm very happy I didn't uh, go to Florida. There's a fucking <laughs> bug in here. Very happy I didn't go to Florida uh, to witness it because that would have been a completely pointless trip. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like I said. But, uh, anyways, this award is at least more accurate to the term metaverse because it's just performers performing in a virtual space using technology that already exists outside of the crypto space with no need for a reliance on the blockchain. Yeah. As with everything else. It's just it's just mocap yeah. in a video game. Uh, the real display of crypto slash NFT integration came from the performance of two legendary hip hop artists, Snoop Dogg and Eminem, who uh, had a storyline involving secondhand weed smoke alongside uh, some pretty basic, uh, archaic almost motion tracking technology that was able to turn them into their actual bored ape avatars. Are you excited yet? No. Here's CNET with more. On Sunday, Eminem and Snoop Dogg, two well-known board ape yacht club NFT holders. That's what they're most known for. Right. <laughs> Wrapped their latest song literally as their Bored Ape alter egos. Eminem and Snoop Dogg became the first major music artist to harness their Bored Apes in a performance. The fuck does that mean? <laughs> the two rappers starred as their respective NFTs in the video clip to From the D to the LBC, their latest collaboration. Sunday's performance doubled as an advertisement for Other Side, a metaverse game developed by Yuga Labs, the team that created the Bored Ape Yacht Club collection last April. Other Side features little goblin creatures called Codas, which had a prominent role in the background of Sunday's performance. Oh, that's what those were. Mm. And look, we're just going to be honest here. It looked like shit. Yeah, it did. It looked like a performance using CG tech from uh, maybe not the late 90s, but it like if there wasn't a NFT angle to this, if the, if the, if the word metaverse wasn't just the hottest buzzword to be like, oh, cool, they did like a, they made themselves into cartoons live. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Not really the first yeah. time anyone's done it, but whatever. Yeah, um, it would. Ju it just looked like an unfinished project. Yeah, things were kind of out of sync <laughs> a bunch of times. Uh, the movements were pretty limited. The mouths appeared to just be pre-rendered to move the lips randomly instead of actually following the cadence of the vocals. Uh, the grand scale that they seemed to be going for fell flat. Yeah, the, the, the vocals thing was like, it looked like it could identify who was rapping at the time, but it would just move the mouth yeah, randomly. Yeah, a lot of like VR games, yeah. You, your but even just like, bop, bop, bop. there's VR stuff, there's like virtual camera stuff now that can track you far more accurately than that. You can like yeah. actual expression Yeah, stuff. no, if they wanted to really do a cool like mocap performance, like the technology exists to do something a lot better looking than what they did. And it goes without saying, again, none of this has anything to do with uh, being uh, on the blockchain. It has no need to be on the blockchain yeah. or be anything that's a digital collectible. Anyway, Snoop and Eminem eventually turned back into their normal real selves to finish the performance uh, with their Board Ape Yacht Club alter egos looming over them above the stage. Very wow. cool. Cool. Wow, that was awesome. I should get my own Board Ape. What? $10,000? Well, okay, I'm not going to do that. That's what's cool. so weird about this is because it just, it, it really seemed as though it was MTV and all of these artists and labels pushing a marketplace and a universe to the last group of impressionable people that don't, maybe aren't aware that it's complete bullshit. Yeah. It, it's like, hey, literal uh, children in a lot of cases, this is the cool thing you want to be a part of. Don't listen to what anyone go ask has your said. dad for his bank account details yeah Do it. they've made it easier than ever for you to be involved 
But uh, yeah, this all coincides with the knowledge that this entire performance exists only to market an elite digital avatar club and their upcoming game, which we've covered before, and it just looks like a blatant Fortnite clone. Uh, it's all just, it's soulless, it's terrible, it's sad for those involved, and it had me begging for further torture from the Red Hot Chili Peppers instead. It also seems to have done nothing at all to move the needle inside the world of digital collectibles and merchandise based off of them, because after this performance aired, an exclusive store went online, selling mementos from this historic occasion. Now, all these mementos, these collectibles, they had very limited numbers to them, as is usually the case. Like, okay, this one is one of a thousand. Uh, this one, in some cases, is one of a hundred. Mm. Wow, that is so rare, very so valuable. Very rare, you gotta grab that up. But at the time that we wrote this episode, absolutely nothing had sold out. Damn. So, wow. even physical goods that show Snoop and Eminem in their, like, avatars hadn't sold out. Yeah. So well, that's Joe Biden's America. No one wants to buy NFTs anymore. Yeah, but you may be thinking that it's just us mocking this stuff and that the market has spoken with or without our input. People demand more metaverse and NFT shit, right? Well, that's where you're wrong, bucko. Yeah. So despite countless new projects debuting, actual trading, wash trading, and desperate panic selling, the overall volume of NFT trading has plunged to the point where it seems almost non-existent. And on the world's biggest NFT marketplace, OpenSea, trading volume is down 99% since May, which wasn't even that long ago. No. We're not even talking about value at this point, because as you are already aware, any shred of remaining value for these things has already just been tanking pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, crypto winter. But now there's simply just no trading happening at all. No one wants to trade anymore. <laughs> uh, here's Fortune with more on these latest numbers. What was once a red-hot market fueled by FOMO during the crypto bull market of 2021 is now just a trickle, with trading volume on the most popular NFT marketplace, OpenSea, down 99% in just under four months. On May 1st, OpenSea processed a record $2.7 billion in NFT transactions, but on Sunday, the marketplace recorded just $9.34 million worth, according to data compiled by DAP Radar. The company recorded 24,020 users on Sunday, about a third fewer than when it hit its record transaction number in May. And again, we should point out that like of those users, uh, even the original large numbers back in May were all people just trading back and forth to themselves. Yes, wash trading. So uh, yeah, despite the downturn in relevance and adoption of digital collectibles, avatars, and the metaverse in general, the industries have persisted. Uh, resulting in some various missteps, some funny, some offensive, some kind of sad. And then let's just start out with the fact that uh, Fortnite is once again allowing its users to experience the gravity of Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech in their own virtual world while dressed as, I don't know, Rick Sanchez, Spider-Man, Batman, Deadpool, or even a Dragon Ball Z character. And this is a follow-up to last year's inaugural, inaugural run, which was seen as distasteful and an example of what not to do in these types of games. But They've obviously learned from their mistakes last year, where Epic Games had to, quote, quickly remove players' ability to perform most emotes uh, while loaded into it. But hey, you have to give Epic credit for sticking with it and actually using their platform in an attempt to educate kids who might not be interested in learning about the civil rights movement otherwise. I mean, look, one time, Everyone kind of thought this was distasteful. We had to stop people from doing the Orange Julius yeah. while uh, MLK was giving his speech. But it's fine. We're not saying we're not giving up because giving up would mean that uh, the naysayers have won. We're going to do it again. Yeah, and this time we're bringing David Guetta. He's going <laughs> to perform this new song he wrote in honor of George Floyd. Shout out to his family. Yes. Thank you, Mr. So Guetta. we can all properly show our respect. You cannot jump on the virtual trampolines until the David Guetta performance. Please respect the rules. Shout out to his family. Now, at this point, honestly, I, it would be hard. If I had to choose which situation would be better for learning, Fortnite or any classroom in the state of Florida, it would be a tough decision. So maybe we are wrong. Yeah. No books are banned in Fortnite yet. I mean, they should put a little library in Fortnite. Yeah. That'd be pretty wild. With all the banned books. Yeah, I play Fortnite, but only for the books. I play Fortnite to learn. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, learn about history. Until they start taking down statues in Fortnite. And then you can't learn anything anymore. Yeah. They, they got a really fun grassy knoll map where uh, <laughs> yeah. you figure out definitively, like, well, if I'm up here in this book depository, there's like, there's no fucking way my bullet did what they say it did. Unless Now, meanwhile, if I was over there on that grassy knoll, 
Well, now there's we're a, talking, buddy. There's a gold gun that just dropped <laughs> up there. <laughs> wow. By the CIA, you say? Hmm. Ah, huh, crazy. Anyway, we have more news, including updates to two stories involving virtual avatar. <laughs> These fucking things. Yeah. Coming up in just a second. But first, we have to take a quick break to thank today's sponsor, starting with Audible. Mm -hmm. James Patterson's thrilling adventure series, Daniel X, gets an exclusive audio-only origin story in Daniel X, Genesis, brought to life by an all-star cast. Daniel is an ordinary teenager just trying to fit in at school when he suddenly finds out, on his 16th birthday no less, that he is anything but ordinary. Not only is he an alien, but he has superpowers that let him conjure anything he wants. It turns out his parents didn't die in a car accident, but they were killed in an epic battle with an intergalactic villain. So those superpowers are just what Daniel needs to join the fight if he can muster the courage to save the human race. It's a fast-paced, funny, fully immersive adventure featuring performances by Michael Cimino, Abigail Breslin, Mercedes Rule, Jimmy Simpson, and many more. You can find, find it only on Audible. So listen at audible.com slash Genesis, link in the description below. And again, I, I use Audible every day in the car, wonderful service, and uh, the fact that they're adding original programming is even better. And this episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. We all shop online. We've all seen that promo code field taunting us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one that it finds to your cart. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, You'll watch the prices drop. We're always online shopping. We're always looking for deals. And we've gone over it many times before, but Honey helps us frequently with getting discounts on stuff that we love buying online. Deals are, uh, they are an art form. They are an art form and they, they have the best deals and it's super easy. <laughs> uh, and it also doesn't just work on your desktop, it works on your iPhone too. You just activate it on Safari on your phone and you can save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. We wouldn't recommend something we don't use, so get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash itdaily. That is joinhoney.com slash itdaily. All right, back into the metaverse town. <laughs> Damn it. With yeah, the, with, I mean, I'm sorry. It's tech news, and there was uh, there was some funny... There, You're all done, excited for the metaverse, right, guys? Yeah, just like everyone hey. else. No, but there there's some funny stuff that happens, and, yeah. and it's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, rubbernecking at the accident site of the metaverse that happens on this show. Yeah, so let's do a little official fact check on some accusations creatively made by Mark Zuckerberg's recent Facebook Metaverse Avatar debut. Mm -hmm. Of course, he was widely mocked for this bit of marketing material, so much so that there was an updated version of his avatar pushed back out within days of the negative reaction. But the original photo was so terrible, so meme-worthy, that plenty of people took it upon themselves to alter the image in order to mock Zuckerberg and Facebook, or Meta, for their attempts at creating an alternate reality. Mm -hmm. uh, some were jokes that flew over a lot of people's heads, like this altered image by Juniper, showing the Eiffel Tower from the original post, re replaced by the mysterious uh, building from Little St. James, a.k.a. Jeffrey Epstein's Sex Slave Islands. Yeah. It's like the weird little temple building. Like blue, Greek-looking, like white and blue. Some, uh, yeah, some, uh, there were people being like, this person's doing disinformation. It's like, you can fucking see the, like, where <laughs> yeah. they, like, paste it over it. It's like, yeah, like not the, even a, it's a, a terrible Photoshop job. No one's yeah. being fooled by this. No one would believe. <laughs> You're no doing disinformatia. Uh, now, some were far more noticeable, though, and even caught the attention of online fact-checking services, which put out statements regarding the accuracy of the posts. No, that had World been... Baby is not a real game <laughs> for the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> Close. Uh, <laughs> but here, here's this image where the background is replaced with the Twin Towers <laughs> and a caption from Mark Zuckerberg himself exclaiming, Friendly reminder, 9-11 never happened in here. <laughs> Which, sorry for laughing, it, but it alludes to the fact that Meta's utopia yeah. is free from terrorist attacks. Yeah. Which it should be. Yeah. It should be free of terrorist attacks. For now. Yeah. Uh, now, this image was quickly refuted by AFP fact check. We <laughs> give it six Pinocchios. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of you were fooled by this image, but... Uh, a lot of you think this is uh, uh, leftist disinformation. Down here at our fact-checking lab, we have conclusively, forensically deduced that this is not real. 
Mark Zuckerberg didn't actually post this. Uh, so uh, the, apparently they had, there was enough of this being shared on Twitter that they were forced to tweet the following. Man, people are so fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> this image of Mark Zuckerberg saying 9-11, quote, never happened in the metaverse is altered. Oh, wait. Well, oh. <laughs> in the original Facebook post, the Meta CEO promoted the company's virtual reality platform, but did not, <laughs> but did not mention the terrorist attacks. <laughs> <laughs> they add that a spokesperson... So did 9-11 happen in the metaverse or not? That's the thing. They had, they had a spokesperson from Meta actually confirm to their service that, quote, the supposed Zuckerberg post mentioning 9-11 is fake, which, of course, would lead anyone to wonder, does this mean that the events of 9-11 played out in the metaverse? 9-11 is apparently canonical, even in our own developed utopia. Yeah. Wow. Which is strange. Can't have anything nice. And it puts a it kind of puts a damper on the whole reason behind a metaverse, which is to escape reality. Yeah. If not, I got 9 11 out here, 9 11 in there. Who cares? What's the difference? <laughs> I go into the metaverse to escape reality, not be haunted by the memories of 9 11 and Mark Zuckerberg's involvement or uninvolvement in it. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Because in this metaverse, he is, you know, theoretically, he's God. Why would why would a god like Mark Zuckerberg allow such bad things to happen to people? Yeah, you uh-huh. got you got to wonder who programmed this. Ugh. Moving over now to an update from our previous story about the AI-driven virtual rapper named FN Mecca, who made headlines this past month for not only becoming the first AI virtual rapper to sign to a major label, but also for uh, becoming arguably the quickest artist in general to just be dropped by the same <laughs> label that had just moments earlier. Uh, picked them up. Mm-hmm. So, quick recap. Every entertainment industry is trying desperately to do weird metaverse v- virtual projects, as you can tell. Yeah. Uh, so they signed a virtual rapper to a major label only to be completely caught off guard by the fact that uh, people uh, might be offended at the idea of a virtual black artist performing virtual black music while being developed by two people who uh, mm, don't look very black to me. <laughs> You ain't black, as Joe Biden would say. Turns out it was even worse than that, though, because despite the whole AI aspect of FN Mecca, there was a very real black artist used on the project who's now suing the creators for damages. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Here's TMZ with more on that. FN Mecca's problems didn't go away when Capitol Records pulled the plug on the controversial project. The black rapper whose voice was used for Mecca has started the process to take legal action against the creators. Kyle the Hooligan says FN Mecca's creators stole his drip to create the character, and he's ready to see him in court. Kyle tells TMZ Hip Hop his attorneys already started the legal process to recoup his damages from both Brandon Lee and Factory New this week. Kyle says he was young when he met with Factory New, but says he was promised equity and ownership for helping voice and write the music for FN Mecca. He also claims he gave them all the cool ideas and would have prevented hiccups like the police brutality photo from ever happening. It wouldn't this, have happened under my watch. Yeah. Of course, in reference to the marketing photo of the virtual rapper being beaten by police. <sighs> Which I finally saw, and you can see it here. And yeah, you would be like, wow, who thought this was a good idea? And I, I still love the quote from the guy at Factory New who was like, okay, well, out of context, this yeah. looks pretty terrible. Sure, out of context, but you gotta understand, <laughs> this is a virtual rapper being beaten up by the police for being black, uh-huh. even though none of us are black. And look, this will be an interesting case. Anything having to do with the legality of what happens in the metaverse is going to set precedent going this forward. Is the first ever drip plagiarism case. Yeah, exactly. He stole my drip. Uh huh. But we we also do worry that any contracts cooked up by industry veterans that were signed by Kyle the Hooligan, who himself said he was young and probably didn't mm. know the ins and outs of the industry probably going to make things very difficult for him but it's a very predatory industry yeah so good luck to him but let's leave the world of our alternative realities behind and talk about the hellscape the real world that we're all currently living in because aside from the absolutely horrifying extreme weather events and soaring temperatures brought on by climate change uh, some of the results just sort of speak for themselves yeah Uh, officials are not only able to investigate long paused murder investigations in nevada thanks to lake mead drying up and revealing all those bodies and barrels. Hey, that's a good thing, uh, right? Hey, we did it. Yeah. Uh, historians have had a field day uncovering once lost artifacts from the Danube River in Europe, like an entire graveyard of Nazi warships. That's Look at hey. that. History again. Thank you, climate change. Mm-hmm. Uh, now paleontologists in Texas are also finding some really cool shit thanks to our abuse of Mother Nature. Large dinosaur footprints. Wouldn't have seen that without climate change. I so. don't see anyone complaining now. Have you seen these large dinosaur footprints? Here's, here's my stance. Climate change is real, and it's fantastic. <laughs> we're, we're learning so much about our planet. Dry it up. Yeah. Dry the place up and then flood it again. Yeah. I love my big, ashy earth. 
Here's the Washington Post with more. At Dinosaur Valley State Park in Glen Rose, Texas, weeks of blazing heat have wrung the Paluxy River dry, revealing sets of dinosaur footprints that experts say date back 113 million years, which is odd because everyone knows the Earth is only 4,000 years old. Well, where's the other set of dinosaur footprints? No, those, that's, that's, uh, that was because I was carrying Jesus. On Jesus actually back. floats. Jesus rode the Tyrannosaurus. Well, actually, there wouldn't be footprints of Jesus because, as we all know, he walks on top of water. So if there was any water there at the time, it would be completely smooth, yeah, smooth he, as glass. He does have that special move. Yeah, but he won't need that special move anymore because there won't be any water. Yeah. That's when he can return. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, so, so back to the article. Some came from a creature called Acrocanthosaurus, a three-toed bipedal carnivore that looks like a slightly smaller Tyrannosaurus rex, according to Stephanie Garcia, a spokesperson for the park. As an adult, it would have stood about 15 feet tall and weighed about seven tons. Another set of footprints came from a four-legged, long-necked herbivore called Sauroposidon uh, that stood a towering 60 feet tall and weighed about 44 tons. While dinosaur tracks themselves aren't particularly rare, they're important to researchers because they provide clues about how the animals lived. Quote, the tracks were made along an ancient inland sea during the Cretaceous period, Garcia said. The dinosaurs stepped in thick mud that held their track shapes well with a lot of detail. With rain and upcoming forecasts, Garcia said the tracks will soon be covered again. Workers have cleaned, mapped, measured, and photographed tracks to monitor changes over time. So again, huh, and, and in Texas of all places, Ted yeah. Cruz is going to be using this for as long as he is in power. Turn up the carbon machine. Let's see what else we can find out there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but in, in more serious... Uh, <laughs> On the NPR on the way over here, they're like, uh, yeah, so like there's a part of Greenland that's like literally it's going to fall in the sea within the next, I don't know, 50 years. And it's going to add 10 inches just just from this section of Greenland, 10 uh, inches, the which is like ev like everything coastal in like Florida. Just pfft. you're How walking in a big puddle now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, I think that uh, the sh most shocking part of that, uh, it was all shocking, but the most shocking part was that. Uh, that was the best case scenario. Yeah. Was like 10 inches of sea level rise. Uh, so Woo! fun stuff. Well, you can just sell your home if you live on the beach. Yeah. Just do what Ben Shapiro says and sell, sell your, your oceanfront property and move somewhere else. Sell it to who, Ben? Aquaman? The same people that are buying all the NFTs. Yeah. <laughs> this is a great investment. But yeah, in, in like 10,000 years when the sea levels drop again. Yeah. Who's going to have that beachfront property? Exactly. Me. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to live forever. As you this do. is my house. Mm -hmm. Anyway, while we're on the topic of the dystopian achievements of Texas, let's check in on how things are going for women who are seeking abortions in the post-Roe world. Yeah. Uh, the offshore abortions have begun, and the process sounds harrowing, unfortunate, sad, expensive, and still potentially dangerous, all because a bunch of rich old assholes wanted to make things harder for everyone to appease uh, their, their god or something. Yeah. We honestly can't believe that these are the lengths that women have to take in order to receive this procedure based on where they live, but it's important to highlight stuff like this so you understand the reality of what people are dealing with. Uh, we reported on this little loophole a few weeks back, but, but now that the operation's in full swing with actual reports from patients, uh, let's see how things are going. Here's local Texas outlet Fox 31. Abort Offshore is an organization helping women get abortions. They travel into federal waters in the Gulf of Mexico where they aren't under the restriction of state law. WOAI spoke with two patients who have tried the method. The women agreed to share their journeys under the condition of anonymity. And they speak to women about the, the reasoning that went behind it. Uh, and they added that if caught, the women could be held criminally and civilly liable. Civil penalties can run as much as $100,000. Under Senate Bill 8, anyone who helps can be sued for up to $10,000 by a private citizen. Michael Kimbrough is a Texas native who currently lives in New York. He is the president of Abort Offshore, and it's a for-profit company that can offer surgical abortions up to 20 weeks of pregnancy. They charge a sliding fee starting at $1,500. So obviously capitalism always finds a way, doesn't it? Do they at least let you gamble while you're out there in international waters? Yes, they should do that. There's a roulette table you've and had everything. A, you've had a tough day, but hey, look at this. Kino. We turn the, uh, we turn the carnival lights on at night and everyone yeah. has a good... Good little bingo session, some roulette, baccarat, all the fun stuff. Uh, so yeah, um, not really a positive story here, but uh, here's some quotes from uh, the, the women that they interviewed on uh, the process of going through this. It's actually kind of James Bond. Once you text the code to the number, then they send you a link. We were escorted into two different black Suburbans or SUVs. And then from there, they took us to a house. 
I don't know how long or where exactly the house was, but it was about a 30 minute drive from the hotel. And they had a private dock there at the house. We leave the hotel and there's only like three different hotels, said Kimbrough. And since there's the aid and abet law right now, we have private drivers that we use. From there, then we go to one of the three different Airbnbs as our disembarkation from the dock. And the article adds that the women are sedated on land and from the dock, it takes about 90 minutes to reach federal waters. This is where the procedures can be conducted free from the restrictions of state law. Uh, the procedure takes about 10 minutes and the voyage lasts about five hours. Quote, when they brought us back, we came into a completely different home. So our drivers in the trucks that we came in were waiting there for us to take us back to the hotel. So it was really very dis discreet. Uh, wow. <sighs> Very inconvenient, uh, but yeah, unbelievable that our, our country is putting women through this and that they have to resort to <laughs> expensive and in some cases, it sounds a little dangerous, a little sketchy, offshore abortions in order to end, uh, end a pregnancy. Come yeah, on. I, I know that, that uh, the technology of uh, vessel stabilization has come a long way, uh, but uh, you know, unforeseen weather patterns, uh, just fucking anything. Uh, it's just not an ideal place to perform such a procedure. No. And it would be, uh, it's just fucking infuri infuriating. It's like to read the process that, and these are women who can actually afford this procedure mm -hmm. and have the time to dedicate to going to this mm -hmm. offshore procedure. So it's just, it's just horrific. Um, and yeah, it. we hope that something, something changes. Joe Biden, uh, codify Roe and also legalize weed. And who knows? Do he's, it. he's got a he's got two years left in this presidency. And if he can just keep the last week going forward. I mean, he's got like potentially maybe just two months oh, left yeah, in his presidency. Yeah. When he can actually do anything. Yeah. So, we'll um, see. yeah, do it. Do it. I'd be so owned if you legalize weed. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Or codified row. Like oh, any of these I'd things. Be so owned. Yeah. His approval rating continues to go up. So everyone else can shut the fuck up. All the talking heads in the media like. Totally unpopular. No, actually, it's really fucking popular. Just un unpopular with you and your, your rich-ass friends. Yeah. Anyways, that's it for uh, today's episode. If you missed any of our previous stuff, we have a newer episode of Weekly Weird News right over here and an episode of News Dump for you to check out. Watch both of those. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment or a like, and we will see you soon. Uh, and uh, enjoy your week. It's Labor Day coming up, after all. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, at least here in Southern California, there's going to be a debilitating heat wave. So hopefully yeah. it's cooler where you are. Drink water. Lots of water. Bye.